This is the Doctor bringing you a commentary playthrough of the game FTL, and today I will be using the Kestrel Cruiser Type B. In order to unlock the Type B layout of the ship, you have to complete two out of the three of the ship-related achievements. The ones I've done are the United Federation, which is a mostly luck-based achievement. You have to have six unique aliens on board the Kestrel Cruiser at the same time. Uh, I don't think it's difficult to do per se, it just requires quite a bit of luck. You have to maximize your chances of recruiting crew members, which pretty much means you have to visit almost every store, and you have to, like, uh, well, you, all, you have to balance the risk and reward of finding crew members carefully. So, uh, for instance, there are these events where you could potentially gain a crew member or lose one, if you're just starting out, you want to keep uh, selecting the choice that could get you a crew member, but if you have like 5 out of the 6 aliens, you probably don't want to take that risk. I don't think it's too hard to do, it just requires a few playthroughs to get it. Uh, the second one, for Arsenal, you have to have every system and subsystem installed, which basically means you have to buy Cloaking, Drone Control, and Teleporter. In a normal playthrough, you'll almost certainly get that achievement anyway, so it's not a big deal. The last one, which I have yet to get, uh, requires you to have the cruiser down to 1 HP and then you have to repair it back to full health. Not difficult to do, you just need the right setup. Uh, the easiest way to do this, of course, is you have to find a store and then you have to find a ship that only does one damage to you, or you can control the ship in such a way that only does one damage to you. And once you get down to 1 health, you jump to the store and repair. Not difficult, uh, but it's kind of gimmicky, and I have not gone out of my way to get that achievement. Uh, otherwise, this ship, the Type B Kestrel Cruiser, is very powerful. It starts out with four basic lasers, which even though this is the weakest weapon in the game, when you have four of them um, on one ship simultaneously, it can deliver enough firepower to overwhelm uh, all defenses in the early sectors. So, there's no ship that you would run into that would pose a problem. Uh, you also start out with four crew, which is always excellent. You can man every system at once. And best of all, you get two excellent aliens. Uh, you get a Zotan, the free power is always nice. And you get a Mantis for anti-boarding uh, uh, duties. Or, alternatively, uh, you can use the Mantis lead the way in boarding assaults when you get a teleporter. Or if I should say, you use to get a, get a teleporter. So, this ship is very flexible, and you just play depending on what you find. Uh, so, with that said, let us, let us uh, rename this ship to something appropriate. So, I think um, it's time to honor one of the classics of gaming, uh, Brood War. And to honor that, of course, we should name it after the famous pro gamers. And who else would lead away but the Emperor himself, uh, Boxer. And I will name the other crew members. Uh, Boxer, of course, will be at the helm, or at his throne, I should say, on this ship. Uh, for the Mantis, we will name him Yellow, Boxer's arch nemesis and rival, but uh, he always failed when it mattered most. I think the two have a fairly close record if you sum up all their games, but Boxer always prevailed at uh, important matches, like Finos, for instance. So, other names associated with Boxer, of course, Reach is a very famous, having famously beaten Boxer in the OSL Finos once. And, I mean, there are a lot of names you can associate with Boxer, of course, like Oov, for instance, is Apprentice, but Oov, Oov gives another ship name after him, because he's also a Bandois. We should name him Grimto, I think. That's fitting. They fought each other twice in finals. Once Boxer won, and once Grimto won. Or did they fight each other twice in the finals? Ah, oh, my memory is starting to go a little... That actually might be wrong. I know for sure they fought in the finals. It was the one after Boxer beat Yellow. It was after Coca-Cola OSL. 
is the next OSL. Grim to one, three, two. But I digress. I think Boxer reached Grim to in yellow. The early greats of Brood War will make a fitting crew for this ship. So without further ado, let's begin. Tip. Grinding sectors. It can be beneficial to stay in a sector for as long as possible to improve the ship since each sector is increasingly difficult. I agree. Plus, you increase your score that way. So let's think. How should I distribute my crew? Reach, the manliest pro gamer, will go man weapons. Boxer, of course, at the helm. Uh, actually, hmm. Grimto, I guess, can go man the engines. And. Oh, yellow can man the shields. Although, from a gaming standpoint, I think it actually makes more sense for Reach to man the shields and Yellow to man the weapons. Because. Uh, the weapons on this ship, uh, whoever mans weapons should level pretty quickly. Yeah, I think this actually makes a lot more sense because potentially I want the Mantis to go and do other stuff and um, it depends on which system I consider more critical. Uh, the weapons or the shield generator. I guess weapons probably on this ship to start because we want to just overwhelm the other ship with firepower and then we don't really need defenses after that okay all right reach at the weapons yellow at the shields boxer at the helm grimto at the engines and let's let's begin let's see all right let's see what we see at the first sector here rebel ship is guarding this beacon you order a pursuit course and prepare to scratch up one more while well, this is the first one i don't know what this talk of one more is but Let's see, this ship is dangerous. Heavy laser, beam drone, missile launcher. Let's concentrate fire on their weapon system. If we can take that out, our ship should be safe. The beam drone can't really hurt me. As you can see, this ship can just lay down a writhering barrage of fire. Next, we will target their shield generator and helm, taking those out. This ship is now completely helpless, and we can finish it off in the next salvo. The enemy ship appears to be powering off FTL, but that's not going to save it. So, having taken no damage, we've completely destroyed that ship, which is a fairly tough ship uh, to, to begin the fight with. We got one field, two missiles, and 18 scrap. Excellent. Let's keep proceeding to this beacon here see what we find and the only other ship at this beacon messages you finally after months of waiting someone has fallen into our trap they have a teleporter that's interesting really see a teleporter this early on they have two small bombs it looks like and a basic laser not too dangerous let's see they sent over a human that's not gonna avail them of any good my mantis will destroy them well my weapons will concentrate on their own weapon system, offering me six missiles, one drone part, and ten scrap. I don't actually have any missiles, otherwise this isn't a bad offer, but since I have no missiles, I will not accept this offer. Next, let's concentrate fire on the shield generator and the helm. After taking that out, I should be able to finish off the ship no matter what I do next. And we'll power the Med Bay to heal up yellow here, taking a bit of damage. Did he manage? To yes, he actually did kill that uh, invader, so that's good. The ship explodes, leaving behind a substantial collection of useful scrap material. One fuel, one missile, 17 scrap. Excellent. Yellow here will go back to the shields, depower the Med Bay, power the engines. And let us. There's no upgrades yet. Let's jump into the nebula see what we find here. You arrive in the nebula and immediately receive a message from an unknown source. Prepare to be boarded. With static from the nebula, there's no way to tell where they came from, but you hear shots fired aboard the ship. Alright, let's see. Are they heading to the med bay? No. They look like they're in the oxygen room. How many are there? There are two. So, that is not a problem. 
should be able to overwhelm them shortly. Ideally, I want to do this in such a way that yellow gets all of the experience. So let us leave, and yellow should be able to finish them both off. And he's got uh, the combat experience from both battles, which is exactly what I wanted. Boxer back to the helm, and Garimto uh, can go to the engines. We'll power the med bay the old-fashioned way. Now we send yellow back to the shields, and excellent. Let us jump to this beacon, and then we can continue jumping to through the nebula. You notice Mantis attack ship ducking between the clouds of swirling space stuff. Like that description, space stuff. It's hunting you. you. Try to get the jump and move into attacks. Swirling space stuff. Look at that alliteration. Writers of this game are not bad, actually. Uh, so here we have a ship with a dangerous number of weapons, including a burst laser Mark II and a heavy laser. Better knock out their weapon system ASAP. Might take a bit of damage. But no, it looks like I've taken no damage because the burst laser charges slower than the basic laser. So next, we will target down their helm and their shields. They're trying to repair weapons, but it will avail them no good since I'll finish them off with this salvo right here. And you can see this ship is incredibly powerful at I've taken over, uh, defeated every ship without taking damage so far. Uh, the ship explodes, leaving behind a substantial collection of useful scrap material. Let us make the shield upgrades. I love upgrading shields early on. So, a pirate ship arrives shortly after you. Judging from the fact that it's attempting to avoid your ship, you assume that it's a smuggler trying to stay away from beacons. I will attack the pirates, of course. You power up your weapons and moving to engage. Where's the period? They need a period there. Alright. I think in this particular case, this ship will try to jump once it's taken some damage. These smugglers. Uh, this ship has basic laser, I mean, not heavy laser mark 1. Missile launcher. Heavy laser cannot penetrate Mark 1 shields, otherwise we'll focus fire on their weapon system. And took some damage from the missile, but it's not a big deal. Next, we will take down their shield generator and their helm, but I missed quite a bit there. No problem. Uh, let's fire some on the weapon system and some on the shield generator. They appear to, be, appear to be repairing quite quickly, and they have pretty good dodge. They look like they don't want to fight. They are trying to escape, as I predicted. Now they're charging FTL. We better focus fire every single shot on their helm, because I do not want them to escape. That would be unfortunate, but we finished them off in one salvo. Ship's cargo was not salvageable. However, they seem to have been surveying the region. They possess detailed maps and data. Download what you can to the ship's map. Excellent. Excellent. Ooh, I like this outcome a lot. So now I can plan my jump very carefully, and I want to hit as many of the ships as possible. Plus, there is a store right near the exit. I'm going to have to think a bit about the optimal jump pattern here. Let's jump to this nebula first. I think th and then if we jump to this distress beacon, that beacon. One, two, three, four. Hmm. This is tricky. I, I can't quite decide exactly how I should make the jumps. One, two, one, two, three. No. One, two. Let's jump to this stress beacon first. Let's see what we have here. You find the source of the distress call, a small research station. It appears to be a small laboratory fire. It appears a small laboratory fire got out of control and is threatening to destroy the station. Their fire suppression system is not responding. 
So, sending your crew in a shuttle to help put out the fire could end badly, and your crew could uh, I could lose someone. I don't want to lose any of my Protoss, I mean, not Protoss, any of my uh, StarCraft greats just yet. No need to take that risk. I like to select option B. I can try to rescue the survivors. I'd never risk a crew member, but I do risk some hull damage. There is a chance I can get an extra crew member, which is always nice. So I'll do that. You pull up alongside the station and cut through the hull. You are able to rescue a few survivors, but many more are lost. One of the survivors offered to join your crew, and you offload the rest on a nearby station. Hand get hand scrap. Excellent. Uh, the guy you rescue is always named Jones, by the way. Dr. Jones. From this particular event. Now I have two Mantis. I want a teleporter. With teleporter and two Mantis, I can go around the galaxy and murder everybody on their ships. So... That was a very favorable outcome. Now I've decided what to do. I guess we'll skirt along the southern path since there are more ships there potentially. We'll jump to this beacon and then we'll jump back into the nebula. Nearby planet shows signs of habitation is the quarantine, so basically this is a blank beacon. Let's see what's in this nebula here. It appears that an automated rebel scout was positioned within the nebula to warn of your passing, and the ship starts to charge FTL. This particular ship has an annoying amount of weapons. We'll send one laser to take out the helm, and the rest to take out their weapon system. So, now we can repower back up the oxygen. And I guess we can power the med bay while we're at it. So this ship is absolutely no threat, and we destroy it in a single, or two salvos, I should say. Ship breaks apart and you feel relief in the knowledge that you will hopefully still be one step ahead of the fleet. Excellent. Let's keep going here. And I'm going to have to plan out my jumps a bit more carefully now. One, two, well, yes. Let's see what we can find here. There's a ship, of course. Ah, it's a slaver event. We will never surrender one of my crew to slavers, of course, but too bad that I don't have a teleporter. And I can rescue some of the slaves. Max power to shields. This ship has a Zotan shield, which will help protect it from any sort of uh, quick demise. And you can see Reach here has the manliest Protoss, of course, has already leveled up his weapons due to how many weapons we have and how fast they fire. Oh, I was targeting the helm. Okay, that's a good choice to target. Next, we will take out their weapon system. No need to risk my ship to any sort of danger, but they surrender. Take one of our slaves as tribute. Destroy us, still die anyway. I accept their offer, and I got another human. I guess we'll put the human in the shield room. Yellow has only gained a minimal amount of shield skill anyway, and we have two mantis as anti-border uh, duty uh, that can serve as anti. Uh, well, what's the phrase? Uh, yeah. Marines, basically, they're combat marines. Uh, wow. Well. So they should be very efficient at taking care of any borders. And now I have to plan my jump out very carefully. It looks like I have maybe five jumps, four to five jumps. One, two, three, four, five. That looks good. So we'll do it. I have either four to five jumps. So one, two, three, four, and potentially five, six, seven. So yeah, that makes sense. Let's hit here and fight yet another ship. You attack an automated Rebel Scout attacking a small refueling outpost. I like these events. I think the refueling outpost will always give you an extra bonus reward, but there's a good chance it gives you a lot of fuel. I could definitely use more fuel. This ship also has a ton of laser weapons, but not as many as I have. Actually, they have a total of four shots too, just like mine, but mine charge faster, so I can overwhelm their uh, ship earlier. Next, let's concentrate fire. Oh, I didn't actually shoot off one of my lasers. That was kind of lazy. Okay, I better wait until all my weapons are charged. A bit sloppy there, but now that they are all charged, mostly charged, 
We'll fire some at the helm and some at the weapon system. Helm taken down. We can attack their shields and their weapons some more. And one more salvo should do it. I've only taken one damage so far. Uh, this is the effect of using overwhelming firepower to destroy enemy ships that you can, uh, as a result, take very little damage yourself. The ship breaks apart and you quickly salvage what you can. Two missiles drone apart and seven scrap. And then the small outpost here is very thankful and they gave uh, some rewards, but no fuel, interestingly enough. Huh. Two missiles, one drone part, 16 scrap. I thought I'd get some fuel from this refueling outpost. Evidently not. That is okay. What's at this beacon? You, smart, you spot a small rebel ship nearby. It seems to have been fitted for transport rather than combat. It does not want to engage you in your ship. I would demand the surrender of their goods. You prepare to secure their cargo by force. They're trying to escape. They have a single laser plus a small bomb. Not really dangerous. Better target down the helm to prevent them from escaping would not like them to escape. They can't really hurt me very much except for that bomb, which the first one even missed. Next, let's target their engines to make sure, even if they repair their helm, that they are stuck here. Then we can safely take out their weapon system, and then pretty much anything will kill them. It does look like they targeted the med bay successfully. Better send Reach and uh, my new guy, Let's send, send yellow there too. Reach and yellow, famous duo on KDF, right? Uh, they played 2v2s for a while. Uh, but yeah, uh, after taking out this ship, we can repair the med bay and we'll be good. You detect faint life signature from an intact piece of hull. They were transporting prisoners and the sole survivor offers to join your crew as a first step on his path to get revenge. Plus two fuel, one drone part, seven scrap. We get an NG, excellent. Man, I have seven crew members already. Let's see. Managed to put out the fire there. Let's send the NG to repair and let's let him get the experience. Jill, I guess her. Then we can heal up our crew members. I already have seven crew. This game is going exceedingly well. I really want a teleporter though. Let's see. I might not be able to hit the store. It looks like I may have miscalculated a bit. Oh well, that's okay. Let's see. As soon as Reach is healed up, go man the weapons. Let's in here goes back to the shield. Joe will stay in the middle ship, as will my two Mantis here. And then we'll keep going. I want to save up to 70 something scrap so I can get a teleporter as soon as possible. Scan show a remote settlement being blockaded by a pirate ship. Ship hastily message you. Stay out of this or you'll be next. I will, of course, attack the pirate. In a situation like this, if you rescue the settlement from the pirate, I think they're usually grateful enough to offer you a substantial reward. In any case, this pirate has uh, two basic lasers so they can't hurt me. You ask for it, they pull away from the plan, moving to engage. So, uh, actually, if I power up my shields level 2, their ship literally can't hurt me. And I can just take down their shield generator first along with their helm. Looks like they have pretty resilient uh, helm and shields. Oh, fire took out their helm. Excellent. And then we'll concentrate fire on their shield generator. Looks like they don't want to fight. They're trying to escape. That's not going to do them any good. So we will next finish off this ship. And having done that, the settlement should be grateful for our efforts. You pick through the remains and contact the settlement. With the pirates gone, you signal the station. We appreciate what you've done, but there'll just be another ship looking to profit from our isolation soon enough. Sorry, he can't give you more. One fuel, one drone part, eight scrap. Always nice in conjunction with the rewards from earlier. I think this hasn't been taken over by rebels yet. We'll find out soon enough. Yes, okay, so I got lucky here. Find a rebel automated scout floating nearby this beacon. Despite its pristine condition, it appears to be deactivated. Might as well fight the ship, so we'll attempt to download the ship's data stores. You're able to pull all the ship's data about the ship, so they didn't have to fight it, but we got more rewards from it. One fuel, one drone part, and ten scrap. Better than the eight scrap. Plus, you can get 
your map updated about the sector. I already have the sector map, but... Oh, it looks like the store has been taken over. That is unfortunate. Well, better go to the exit now. Go on to the next sector. After this, you arrive at the long range beacon with the FTL drive to charge you can jump to the next sector. You come out to jump to see laser glass coming from the other side of the beacon. Looks like someone's under attack from pirates. We will of course aid the civilian ship. You power up your weapons and engage the pirate ship. Pike beam, heavy laser. Their ship literally can't hurt mine, so nothing to worry about here. Target the shields, then the helm, then profit. Man, so many ships that are vulnerable to boarding. I really need to find a shop ASAP and then get uh, my crew teleporting uh, over and just start murdering crew members. I love boarding. It's so fun. And Yellow already has mastered weapons, of course, as the manliest Protoss was that ever in doubt. Ship, uh, pirate ship breaks apart. You hasten to clack the, contact the civilian ship. Two missiles, one drone part, 11 scrap, and a heavy ion weapon. This sector has become increasingly dangerous for friends of the Federation. I think my crew can patch up some of your hull damage as thanks. I only took one damage, but free repairs never hurt. So, I want to go to a Zotan control sector since there's a higher probability of getting uh, a shop that sells a teleporter. Although then, I have to fight basically four hostile sectors in a row. That's pretty crazy. If I jump to the Mantis control sector, I only have to fight three hostile sectors, but you know what? Let's let's go to the Zotan control sector and then fight our way through the galaxy. All will tremble uh, against the Emperor himself. Boxer fears no one. You've entered the Zotan territory. This species is not renowned for giving anything for nothing, but you can always be assured of fair hearing. Now, I want to maximize my chances of getting a shop, so that means jumping to beacons that reveals as many other beacons as possible. That means jumping to this particular beacon first. And let's see what we find here. You find an abandoned mining station on a nearby moon. A quick scan shows no life forms. However, you discover a useful or usable drone schematic. Anti-personnel drone. It's not bad, but... Uh, heavy ion. That can be good. No reason to sell that just yet. No store here. We better go to this beacon to see if there's a store lower two jump beacons. A light asteroid field is entering the atmosphere of a nearby planet, a fireworks show on a galactic scale. There's little for it but to take in the ambiance and program the next jump. Isn't ambiance spelled with an E? I'm 60% sure that's true. Alright, well, there is indeed a store there. I can hit the stress beacon, then the store. Oh, I might as well go to the store first. Yeah. Might as well go to the store first and see what we get here. Human ship hails. My friends, please, there is nothing I don't have and there is nothing worth wait, uh, wanting that I can't get. Why not take a look around my shop? Crew teleporter. Alright. Um, and there are some extra crew to hire. Not that I need any. I do not need the anti-personnel drone, but I could definitely benefit from 30 extra scrap. And then, hmm, jump here, here, no, I want to jump through the nebula. So I'm going to jump the stress beacon, this beacon, this beacon, this beacon, and then the nebula. Then we'll jump around the nebula a little bit and then head to the exit. Okay, better buy some fuel. 13 should be enough because I want to upgrade some more power. Let's see. Level 1 teleporter should be good enough when I have two mantis. This ship is awesome for teleporting, by the way, because the teleporter is right next to the med bay. Can't ask for a better layout. Um, there are certain ships that are like this. The rock ship, I think, is like this too. I think possibly the Taurus or the NG ship. I haven't played that ship in a long time, and it's not really a good ship for boarding, but I think it also has a layout like this. But yeah, this ship is really good. Okay, let me think. Do I need to buy anything else? Not really. Hmm. I could use some more upgrades. But you know what? 
better buy two more fuel for good measure. Or no, no, with a with a boarding team, I should be able to get enough fuel. Let us upgrade my power once more, and let's journey across the galaxy now. Let's see what's at this distress beacon. You find the source of the distress call, a small research station. This event again. Hmm. Uh, I guess I can send my crew in a shuttle to try to put out the fires. But I don't want to lose any of my two elite mantis boarding team, nor do I want to lose the Zotan. I better dock and try to rescue the survivors again. You locate the highest concentration of life forms and bring the ship alongside the station. Before you can begin the un begin to offload the survivors, a huge blast splits the station apart. Your ship is thrown away and some debris pierces your hull. You watch helplessly as the last survivors are consumed in the collapse of the station. Got a little scrap out of that, but unfortunately it couldn't save anyone from that event. That is all right, though. You arrive at a Zotan research facility. They say they are researching genetic distortion due to stasis sleep. So this event, always good, I think, to participate in their study. And they offer a small amount of scrap as thanks. There's the other possibility, which is that I have to fight pirates, uh, which is, I think, the better outcome, since Zotan can offer pretty nice rewards if you do that. Let's see what's at this beacon. You jump in to witness the Zotan ship's FTL drive overload. In their final moments, they implore you not to get involved, but it's too late. The attacker is already upon you. The attacker is also a Zotan ship. Zotan ship with that prevents my crew from teleporting over. That is okay, though. After this, I really gotta start upgrading um, engines. So. They have a heavy laser, anti-ship drone, and a missile weapon. Better take out their weapon system. Now, they hit me in the teleporter room. We're gonna have to heal up while I send over the NG to repair. Took out their missile launcher. Good, that's all I have to take out. And then after this, we can shift power to the teleporter and teleport over onto their ship. And then they have two mantis on board. That's interesting. That is very interesting. We better focus fire down their weapon system. They send you a message. I can I cannot believe how well equipped your ship is. Please take this and let us live. But their offer is pathetic, and I will not accept this offer. So we will continue to fight them. Uh, my mantis is beating their mantis here. Yellow, of course, uh, king of silver, has no problem taking on these posers here. After finishing off this ship, I've gotten one fuel tube missiles and 29 scrap. Excellent. We can now heal up a bit more and we'll make some engine upgrades. Because I like to get to level 4 engines, or 5, uh, as soon as possible. Uh, as soon as I get more scrap, we will continue to make upgrades in that area. With the teleportation strategy, I don't actually need much power in the weapons. So that's another advantage here. Uh, let's see what's in this sector. The Zotan ship is waiting at this beacon. They request your identification, but radiation from the sun in this system is disrupting your communications. They take your signs for aggression and moving to attack. Heavy laser plus a pike beam. The ship cannot hurt me. So this will be yet another simple victory. Uh, tempted to equip that heavy ion uh, cannon. Because ion weapons can be good, but I think two basic lasers are better than one heavy ion, honestly. It's probably my least favorite of the ion weapons. I'll teleport into the door control room. Not that it really matters which room I teleport into. And we will kill the two uh, Zotan without much difficulty here. And having won this particular battle, there are no more life signs remaining on the ship. You strip it strip it of useful materials getting plenty of fuel to Zotan that is not enough to uh, be a serious threat let's see upgrade engines once more and we will oh we don't have enough to upgrade sensors that's what I like to upgrade next uh, let's start to go into the nebula now uh, inside this nebula, you detect a rogue planet drifting through space. On the surface, a huge monolith visible at this distance, even to the naked eye. Zotan Elder hails you from the planet. Through luck or intent, you have discovered the great eye. Looking to its death, you received your just dessert. 
All right, so this event, if you put a shipping closer, you could lose a crew member. But you know what? I've been very cautious so far, so let's let's take the chance. I think there are a huge number of different outcomes that can happen. You can get like free scrap, you can get a weapon, I think, you can fight a ship, or you can lose a crew member. Let's see what happens. You pull the ship in closer. You approach the planet carefully, trying to keep your ship from breaking up in orbit. The monolith, whatever it is, must sense as much because the next thing you know, you have enough scrap to patch up your damage and more besides. Excellent. Got 30 scrap out of that. Let's upgrade sensors. Oh, well, that was probably not a good decision. Can't take that back now, though. Because I don't need sensors inside Nebula. Uh, I guess what I could use is level 2 teleporters, so we will upgrade that next. Let's see what's here. This drone isn't looking for you, Star Wars, of course. Perhaps it's scouting ahead for the Rebel expansion, or maybe they're seeking to use this Nebula for cover. Regardless, it identifies you as hostile. This ship, again, literally cannot hurt me. So we can just blast apart the shields. Heavy laser mark 1 plus uh, basic laser. So I love two shields, nothing to worry about. We will next focus down the helm. And one more salvo should do it. How are my crew progressing on their skills? Grimto's actually leveled up. Boxers leveled up pretty nicely there. The ship explodes, leaving behind a substantial collection of useful material. 3 fuel, 1 missile, 21 scrap. There is a store here. Don't really need to go to the store. There's nothing that I would need. So let's just ignore the store and keep jumping to as many beacons as possible. You receive a message. This area is off limits. Submit your ship to processing. It's only one guard ship in a lonely beacon. You decide to fight your way out. They have a med bay, an ion cannon, two beam weapons. Hmm. So against this ship, it is imperative that I take out the med bay, of course. After that, my crew can just teleport in and finish off the ship uh, no hassle. It's also important my ship gets as much shields and evade as possible, because I don't want the beams to hurt me. Gotta keep firing to take out the med bay. Once that is taken out, the power two of the lasers, power the teleporter, teleporting to the med bay, and there's nothing to do now except to wait patiently. Or in the case, my case, since I have two mantis, I don't have to wait very much. Yellow is rocking it. He won his battle first again because yellow is a baller. Uh, this guy, Jones, not as good. With the, ship, uh, with the crew dead, you are able to take the fuel out of storage. You also take all the scrap you can manage. Excellent. So, heal up my crew. Jump to this beacon. and We'll jump to as many nebula or nebulae, plural nebula, uh, as possible. Uh, try and decide what upgrade I want to get next. Probably medbay level 2. That's a good upgrade to get. Hmm. Uh, but we better get some more power before that. So, let's see what awaits us at this beacon. There appear to be a number of small stations nearby. Before you have time to scan them, warnings go off. Rebel teleporter was using one of the stations. We have been boarded. They sent, uh, we will send Reach over to assist. And Klitsen, recall my NG since... They only do 50% damage in combat. Uh, and otherwise, we want our Mantis, of course, Jones and Yellow to gain the experience. So we'll send Reach out. And Jones and Yellow should each win their battle. And then we'll send Clinton out. So that way we can get as much experience as possible for my elite boarding team here. I think I want to upgrade the med bay next so I can heal faster. I am impatient when it comes to healing. Let's see. I think I have only one more nebula jump before I have to head to the exit. I'm pretty sure I have at least one though. So let's jump to this nebula. In advance, Rebel Automated Ship main station near a small rebel space station. However, with all functioning sensors, it is impossible to tell what is inside. I will of course attack the automated ship to get to the station. This ship 
Hmm. It's pretty dangerous. Ion cannon, beam weapon, basic laser. We're gonna take the risk of teleporting to their helm with two mantis. It's possible to do this with level 2 teleporter, but it is a little risky. However, in this case, I feel reasonably confident about doing it. I mean, it is always possible to recall them safely, so I should be fine. We will concentrate my weapons fire upon their, their weapon system so I can avoid any sort of complications, and then we'll concentrate fire on the shield generator. And this instant teleporter is active, I must recall my crew. And then next, we'll continue firing on their shield generator while I power the med bay to heal up my crew members. Depower the engines a little bit. And then I should be safe from this ship unless their ion cannon fires once more. And it hits my shields, but that's okay. You savage when you camp on the broken ship. Investigate the station. The station was either abandoned or stripped clean. It seems to have lain unused for quite some time. You find nothing useful. That is unfortunate. So, let's see. I can... I have to head to the exit now. So, let us do that. And, uh, I think at a nebula... Beacon? For an exit, there's never any event. I'm like 90% sure. Let's go to the rock control sector next. Okay. What is going to await us in this sector? The rock people have a particularly aggressive stance towards alien races trespassing their space. You should tread carefully here. Indeed. There's actually a store nearby. But for now, I am going to pause this playthrough.